Hello, I'm Bill Serban, and this is an episode of the Cognitive Challenges of Teaching video series produced by my colleague Steve Chu and me. This segment focuses on metacognition and self-regulation and explores how poor met metacognitive knowledge and skills limit student learning and also what teachers can do to improve students' metacognition. In this classroom scene, two students react to their exam scores. One is surprised at her failing grade. Going into the test, she felt well prepared and confident she knew the material. The other student attributes doing well on the exam to studying with several other students, but even more specifically thinks the key was how the group members tested one another and explained the material to one another. These reactions reflect differences in students' metacognitive knowledge and judgments about their own learning. Metacognition plays a key role in learning and more broadly in students' capacity to regulate their own learning and thinking. Metacognition involves two aspects of learning and thinking. First, it involves knowledge and awareness of one's own learning and thinking. And second, it's a, the ability to plan, monitor, assess, and regulate one's own learning and thinking. Some everyday examples of metacognition in an academic context include thinking that you know an answer to a question but simply can't recall it at the moment, you should review an article you read last week because you've forgotten many of the key points. That there is something wrong with your solution to a problem. That you need to reread a passage because you didn't understand it or because you weren't paying attention to it. That you need to schedule study sessions to prepare for an exam coming up in two weeks. And that after testing several times on a topic, you're confident you know it. And you need to make a plan for working on a major course project. Metacognition enables us to monitor, evaluate, and adjust our learning and thinking. We notice when our attention wanes, when comprehension and memory fail or succeed, when our thinking is faulty, when we have or haven't learned something, and so forth. Moreover, metacognition enables us to regulate our learning whether that involves refocusing and maintaining attention on the task at hand, rereading material that doesn't make sense, planning to undertake a major assignment or project, or how to recover from a poor grade and improve our performance. It's difficult to overestimate the importance of metacognitive knowledge and skills for effective learning. Metacognition makes you smarter, better able to take advantage and develop your abilities. Moreover, Metacognition is the basis for self-regulated learning in which students plan, apply strategies, monitor, evaluate, and adjust their learning. The cognitive challenge for teaching is that students differ widely with respect to their metacognitive knowledge and skill. Their metacognitive weaknesses, gaps, and flaws can impair learning. Here are a few well-known metacognitive weaknesses and commonly held assumptions and beliefs that limit learning. One, the best way to learn is through repetition and re-exposure to the material. This belief is the basis for adopting learning strategies such as rereading and rote memorization, which actually are relatively ineffective. Another is each student has a unique learning style by which they learn best. Although this is a widely believed idea, there's actually no evidence to support this belief. Third, academic performance is based on immutable innate differences in ability. Students who believe they lack innate ability in a subject are more likely to avoid it or give up easily when they experience difficulty. Another idea is that learning should be easy. Something is wrong if learning is difficult. And last, if you can answer questions easily when studying, that's a good indication you have learned the material and are ready to make, take an exam on it. To summarize briefly, metacognition is essential for effective self-regulated learning. Lack of metaco metacognitive knowledge and skills can interfere with learning in many different circumstances. Metacognitive gaps limit students' ability to learn independently and to regulate their own learning. 
Here are some recommendations to improve metacognition and self-regulation. First, help students develop more accurate beliefs about intelligence and learning. You can provide recommendations and advice to students throughout the term about how to study and learn the knowledge and skills in the course. Consider creating a course learning guide that describes and explains effective ways of studying and learning in the class. Second, help students learn to estimate and evaluate their own learning more accurately. Use practice tests and quizzes. Practice quizzes are particularly effective because they provide direct feedback to students about what they know and don't yet know. One idea is to give a practice test early in the course before the first major exam. Review the answers with students, point out how to answer questions, and recommend ways they can study to improve their exam performance. Then use practice tests throughout a course to help students identify gaps in their learning. Also encourage students to self-test when they study. Third, help students understand learning goals and expectations. Many new or underperforming students do not understand course assignments and instructors' expectations. A general recommendation is to be explicit and transparent. Rewrite assignments to reduce academic jargon and define terms clearly. To achieve greater transparency, ask students to explain what they think the assignment expects them to do. Use their feedback to further improve the clarity of the assignment. Fourth, help students understand performance criteria for assignments. Many teachers use rubrics that delineate the criteria on which student work will be evaluated. That's good. However, it's important to review the criteria with students and provide examples of previous students' work to highlight strengths and weaknesses. For example, if an assignment requires students to quote, analyze, and quote, a perspective or theory, show them examples of strong and weak analyses so they know what it means to analyze the subject matter in your discipline and course. And fifth, practice self-regulation for major course requirements, such as exams, projects, and assignments. Self-regulation involves four parts, planning, monitoring, evaluating, and adjusting. You can ask students to practice each of these. For example, for a major project, ask students to, one, plan by submitting study plans for the project. Two, practice monitoring. Ask them to record their activity and progress. Third, have them evaluate their work. They can use rubrics to self-assess self their progress. And fourth, give them practice adjusting their learning. After they've performed, ask them to reflect on their performance and identify ways to improve. For more information about metacognition and self-regulated learning, see these resources. Because metacognition and self-regulation are such broad concepts, we've selected a number of resources that really focus on classroom applications and strategies that you can use in your own class. We hope you have an opportunity to discuss metacognition and self-regulated learning with colleagues. If so, here are a few discussion questions to get you started. Thanks for your interest, and we hope you'll be able to view other videos in our series.